today, Satan. Not today, Nick. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. Questions. Where's my cocktail? Where? That's my opinion. All right. You ruined it. You ruined it. You did. Uh, what the f is this? The lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. <laughs> you are the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. Before we start, it is time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Jibu Beauty. They have an amazing skincare collection that will make your skin and your soul look amazing. Their personal mission in life is to make your skin glow. From the Super Duo to the Multitasking Tint Moisturizer to even their new Enchanted Bloom collection, everything that they offer is just perfection. So if you want to get your products, make sure to go to the link on the description below and do not forget to use my discount code ANDY15 and you will get between 15 and 20% off. So get your products right now. Jibu Beauty, inspired by dreams, made for reality. Hello, Beverly Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beverly Hills, and welcome to another piece of tea of the day, girl, on this amazing Wednesday. And now it is time to do a little recap of the last episode of The Real Housewife of New Jersey. I mean, girl, these ladies. It's so funny. They know how to have a great time and they know how to like go for the juggler on the next literally second. I mean, look, I have, I have to tell you guys. I mean, this season has been giving a lot. Yes, it is the same problems and the same thing that we have been seeing over and over and over for a very long time but now because we are i think we are finally getting to like a conclusion on you know on this whole drama between melissa and Teresa, and i think that's what we are finally seeing here you know on this um season itself and i think uh the end of everything is going to be at the reunion which by the way is being filmed tomorrow okay so expect the unexpected when it comes to that reunion because it's going to be crazy honestly so now if we're not going to start talking about the whole episode um it is so wild how these ladies are able to yeah, to just have a good time with people that they just hate each other. I, I saw that comment everywhere all the time. Like, oh my God, I could never do something like that. Like you love some, you hate someone and you're fighting and you're hating their family and everything. And then out of nowhere on the next uh, scene, they're having fun and laughing and getting drunk. But I think <clears throat> at the end of the day, if we really look deep into this, it's literally like when you have to go and, and, and work in your office or wherever, it's not like you love all of your co-workers. You know, there will always be that one or couple of co-workers that you really hate, you know, but you pretend not even to like, but you're like, okay, you have to like uh, be on the same environment. So what are you going to do? You know, like there is nothing like it's a professional environment. So I think that's why they're able to behave like that because they know that they're not going to be BFF. Now, of course, it goes to a different level when, you know, they're able to scream at you and, 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 and belittle you and, and use, you know, very hard words, things that will never happen in an office. But I think the concept at the end of the day, it's kind of like the same. However, with that being said, I feel that there is nothing better than when we see the group of housewife, all of them, just having fun and going like completely, utterly drunk. You know, I think those moments are one of the ones that I enjoy the most. So watching all of the ladies in Ireland just drinking beer and whiskey and like you know shots and like the whole thing and how much fun they were actually having like for a moment you just forget about everything you know you just forget about the fights and 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 stupid shit and they and you just go and go hard at it and it was like kind of like really fun to watch um for example like jackie goldschneider 
shogging that beer. I think that was of those moments that I would say like, oh, if we will get more of this Jackie, I will even we will be down to have her back because this is like someone that you you can see that she is having fun and enjoying and don't give a fuck about everything. Yes, I mean, she's going to come back to normal literally like the next day, but at least for that one moment, it was nice to just see her not you know, just being happy and the whole group being happy. I think that was a really, really amazing. Um, let's see. Jennifer Fessler. So this is my thing. The only thing that I do not like about Jennifer Fessler, to be very honest, is her friendship with Margaret Josephs, you know, uh, because she is definitely like very one sided. However, I feel that I'm ready to give her a fair shot on the show, you know, because look, I was very happy with Danielle and Rachel. But now I'm feeling that Rachel is not giving that much, you know, and I don't th I don't know if she is actually housewife material. I'm actually very confused why Jennifer was giving the friend of role and Rachel was giving the full time um, job. You know, because it kind of like, it really doesn't make any sense. Jennifer is really giving a lot, you know. And I feel that given the right circumstances, Jennifer might not be completely loyal to Margaret, you know. So I'm feeling that, that I mean, I don't know. And, and she definitely has more of a package. You know, she's more fun. She's more, um, I don't know. It's a little bit different is what I'm trying to say. It's a little bit different. Um, I'm still not 100% on her team, but this episode definitely made me change my views on Jennifer Fessler. And I was thinking even like, what if we just like take down uh, Rachel? Because I think Danielle is doing a great job, to be honest. But let's just take down Rachel and put Jennifer as a full time, you know? So I'm, I'm, and, and something is telling me by next season that she is going to be 100% a full time. Uh, so let's see if she if she keeps giving and bringing those housewife moments that we enjoy and the stories and the sassiness and the whole thing instead of just being like like up Margaret's ass, uh, she will get there. And I think that's the difference because even though Jennifer is friends with Margaret, I don't see her being up Margaret's ass. While Rachel is definitely kind of like she she break herself in two and one half is up Melissa's ass and the other half is up Margaret's half ass, you know? So yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm not too fond of Rachel. I don't hate her, but uh, she definitely needs to do some changes if she wants to belong into the housewife world. You know what I mean? Now <clears throat> Um, this uh, next day, you know, and the, and the breakfast and everyone is start like fighting. And, uh, I mean, the first thing is <sighs> the whole rat situation. And then Margaret also fighting because, oh, sorry guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. And Margaret is saying something like, um, um she felt so threatened by the fact that people are saying that she has an arsenal when it is so obvious that she has an arsenal, you know, this is not something new. This is something that it has been discussed. I want to say for like three or four years already. So it, it, it's, it's a common thing, you know, like everyone knows that Margaret has an arsenal, you know? So why is she deciding to like, um, to like act this way? You can definitely see that she feels threatened that this is now being part of the conversation. And now we have the Danielle of it all. You know, Danielle is definitely confronting Margaret and, and Rachel. I mean, she's calling a spade a spade, you know? And I am keep thinking like, Rachel is so like upset because you know, like, oh my God, you call me a rat. How could you call me a rat? It's like, literally, that's what you did. You I mean, you, take what Danielle was saying and you run to Margaret and you 
you told her on a way that it sounds like Danielle was being derogatory or like being like like mean against her and it changed all the narrative you know and I think that's their definition of a rat so like yes she is one you know she did that it's it's like the footage is right there so why is she denied it so much I love the reason why I love Danielle so much is because she's able to look through everyone's bullshit you know she's kind of like really making her own mind and it is so funny uh, Danielle even said it herself at one point, it's like, why there is always something against me, you know? And it is because uh, Margaret, Melissa, uh, Jackie, and now Rachel, they know that they can't control Danielle, you know? That, and, and, and that it, it's not even that she is, oh, she is Team Teresa or Jennifer, no. She is literally giving everyone a first shot and she's making her own mind with everything that she's learning all the way, right? And that threatens the F out of these mean girls, you know? So that's why they're constantly going after her. And Danielle keeps just being like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, the, the more that you fight me, the more you are showing me that I am right. So I'm loving that part about um, Danielle. Now we're gonna go into the next part, which is, you know, the band and they're going to the other thing and they're having all these conversations about cheating and infidelity and how everyone there has been either a cheater or, you know, have been cheated on and the divorce and Dolores and Frank and, you know, and all of them. And, and again, Jennifer Fessler having a full on like segment right there to explain her story. It just felt so natural, you know, in a way that it doesn't feel natural for Rachel to be in this group. So um, and then we're going into like the whole comment of, of you know, uh, Melissa and Teresa and Antonia and Melania, you know, and I think, you know, Melissa, you know, jumps right there, you know, and it's like, oh, you're going to you want to talk bad about Antonia. I'm like, she was not talking bad about Antonia. First of all, she was asking a question, a question that was asked by your friend, you know, and the only thing that she was saying is like, like what Melania was feeling because Melania said it. Melania said was, was like, I was there for her sweet 16 and she couldn't bother to be in my sweet 16, you know, and the whole excuse of like, she had a cheer event. Oh, she had a cheer event all day long. Like she couldn't just like, like finish and then go to the party like this is the kind of things and, I, and I, I honestly like every single time that for example for my birthday or for any other special event that I'm doing if someone is telling me like oh I can go because I have this I, I think something dumb you know I'm like so are you gonna be doing that all day long so you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be doing that from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to bed so that literally shows that you don't give a shit about me. So I think that's what Milani was trying to say out there. So like I went to her Sweet 16, which is not a random birthday. You know, it's a very big birthday here in the United States. And, and you're not going to come to mine. Why? Right? But anyways, the whole point on this, it's not even about the kids. It's about the fact that Teresa was literally like just answering a question, you know, and the fact that Melissa jumped in so bad is because she was trying to find a moment to try to say like, oh, see, Teresa doesn't want the kids to get along. It's like Teresa has never said that, you know, Teresa has never, ever said like, I don't want my kids talking to your kids. Things that if we if we have been seeing, Joe actually have did with the kids, the other the other episode that they were playing softball. Remember how did, he didn't want little Joy to be close to Teresa. We all saw it, it was right there, right? And I'm again, I'm thinking like, why, then, why don't you jump at your friend for asking questions that it will involve the kids, you know? Also, I found it very funny, like Jackie being like, oh my God, Teresa almost killed me when I talk about her daughter. Yeah, bitch, because you were saying that Gia was doing coke on the bathroom, you know? That's a little bit different of, uh, at someone not going at the other person's sweet 16, you know? So, like, girl, like, shut the fuck up, you know? Um, I, like, the whole, I mean, the whole question by Rachel kind of, like, rubbed me the wrong way, and I was also thinking, like, like, why is she asking this question, you know? 
Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if Melissa was the one to uh, to tell her to ask that question. Um, let me see what else we have over here. Then they 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 go shopping. They do all of that. You know, they try to like talk everywhere. Blah blah blah. And then when they come back, I was like, and there you have it. That's the scene that we were missing so far, and it's the scene of Melissa calling Joe Gorga to tell her how outrageous uh, Teresa was. But more of that, for the first time, we hear that it was Melissa, the one who said, I don't think we belong to, the, her, to that wedding. You know, like, I don't, believe, I, I don't think that we should be going to that wedding. So right there, it's literally Melissa manipulating Joe using fake information so Joe will get amped up, you know, and say like, oh, well, like if she's already talking about the kids, then fuck her. I'm not going to go to my sister's wedding. See how this is working out now? Melissa is being exposed for who she is. She is literally manipulated the whole situation. She could easily understand that Teresa was not being malicious, that Teresa was not saying, Antonia is a fucking bitch. No. No, what she was saying was like, like, uh, on the on the one second answer, you know, was like like no, they they should not have any problems. But Melania was feeling very hard that Antonia didn't come to the Sweet Sixteen. But now Melissa is using that to go to Joe and say like your sister is talking shit about your kids, you know what I mean? So I'm so happy that that now we're seeing like the truth about um, Melissa because she's she keeps getting exposed. Uh, left and right and uh, I think that was like pretty much uh, the hint of the whole thing you know like then they, they they're gonna go into like another dinner and fight a little bit more um, but I'm thinking that th that I think that's that's the only important thing that we need to get from this season is all those people who hate Teresa I, I don't know how they do it because I keep seeing all these scenes here and there where it's so clear that Melissa is the one who has been manipulating the whole situation over and over and over. I don't know why. It will be so much easier to get along. It will be so much easier to help keep the family together, you know, and she doesn't want to. She just doesn't want to, and she is taking Joe down with her, and it, that's even the, mo the the saddest part of this whole situation. Oh, girl. So, anyways, that's what is going on so far on the Real House of New Jersey. Uh, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Remember, if you want to get a personalized message from me, you can book me now through Cameo. The link is on the description below. And if you want to get all the tea related to the Real House with of New Jersey or any of the other Bravo shows, make sure to subscribe, 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 uh, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye.